Hi, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. In this mini-series, we're gonna talk about the structure and function of carbohydrates. So to begin, we're gonna go over an overview about the different kinds of carbohydrates that come in our diet. When we look at the um, chemical composition of carbohydrates, they always have this particular ratio of a certain number of carbons per H2O. And this is really where the name carbohydrate comes from, the hydrate of carbon. So a, car a carbon to hydrogen to oxygen ratio of one to two to one. And this particular ratio is what underlies the fact that carbohydrates are already more oxidized than fats are, which is one of the reasons that we can get more, um, that we can get more energy out of the same weight of fats as we can compared to carbohydrates. Okay, so let's look at the different forms that carbohydrates come in our diet. We can really divide carbohydrates into two categories, simple and complex. And these are referring to the sizes of the compounds. So simple carbohydrates come in two different flavors, monosaccharides and disaccharides. Mono meaning one, these monosaccharides are the building blocks that form all of the other carbohydrate compounds. So monosaccharides come in three different flavors. We have glucose, fructose, and galactose. So those are the three kinds of monosaccharides. Disaccharides are gonna be combinations of two monosaccharides put together. So the prevalent di uh, dietary disaccharides are maltose, lactose, and sucrose. And we'll talk about specifically which monosaccharides combine together to form these disaccharides. Now let's take a look at the complex carbohydrates. So complex carbohydrates are gonna be larger structures, larger than disaccharides. The first category are called the oligosaccharides, and oligosaccharides are gonna be composed of somewhere between three to 10 monosaccharide building blocks. And then we have our polysaccharides, poly meaning many. So polysaccharides are going to be carbohydrates that are composed of more than 10 monosaccharides all bound together. And when we look at the kinds of polysaccharides we have, there are starches, there is glycogen, which we have talked about already because glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrate in the human. And we also have fibers. So let's first jump in to talk about the different kinds of monosaccharides. So all of three of these monosaccharides are six carbon sugars. They are hexoses, so hex for six. All of these monosaccharides have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens. So they have the same atoms that make them up, but they're just in slightly different configurations. So the first one is glucose, which we're probably pretty familiar with already. Um, so glucose is the most abundant form of monosaccharide in the body. Now when we're eating, when we're getting glucose from our diet, it's primarily in the form of disaccharides or from polysaccharides. And so here I'm showing you a two-dimensional structure of glucose. Throughout this lecture series, I'm always gonna use this cyan color to represent glucose. The next monosaccharide is fructose. Fructose is also composed of that same six carbon structure, just in a slightly different configuration. So where do we get fruco fructose in the diet? It comes from fruits, veggies, honey, and high fructose corn syrup. And fructose contributes about nine to 11% of the energy intake in the US. I'm always gonna represent fructose as yellow in this lecture series. And then the, th uh, the third monosaccharide are, is galactose. And I'll always represent galactose as green. And galactose we consume in a disaccharide form. Okay, so now I've been alluding to this fact that we can take these monosaccharides and bind them together to form disaccharides or larger, more complex carbohydrates. The way that we bind them together are through glycosidic bonds. So a glycosidic bond is a covalent bond that is joining monosaccharides together. Now we can describe these glycosidic bonds based on two factors. The carbon number, where the, referring to the which carbon on the monosaccharide is part of the bond, as well as the bond orientation. Now, so far in these pictures, I've been showing you all of these monosaccharides in two dimensional um, representations, but really they are three dimensional compounds. So um, these bonds can have an orientation that is either up, upward or downward. So an alpha orientation is gonna be when the bond is directed upward. The beta orientation is gonna be when the bond is directed downward. And so here, 
It's just an image where I've taken a glucose molecule and I have numbered the carbons for you. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize this, but just so that you're familiar with why we're using these numbers when we're talking about the different kinds of glycosidic bonds. So here is an example where we have taken two glucose molecules and we have bound them together. This is an alpha 1-4 linkage. 1-4 because we have the bond between carbon 1 and carbon 4, and then alpha because the bond is directed downwards. So this is a maltose. And then here is an example of a, um, a different kind of bond between galactose and glucose, and this is a beta 1-4 linkage. So in this case, again, we are looking at the, a bond between the number one carbon and the number four carbon, but the orientation of the bond is different. In this case, if we were to draw this three-dimensionally, the orientation of the bond would be upward. So this is a beta 1-4 linkage between galactose and glucose. So this is what we would, uh, this is the kind of linkage that we have in the milk sugar lactose. Now, why do we care? We care about this a lot because enzymes are specific to the type of, uh, of glycosidic bond. Now, as we work through the rest of this lecture, every time that you see an, an, um, a name that has an A's ending, that is gonna clue you in to the fact that it is an enzyme, that an enzyme is a protein that will be catalyzing chemical reactions. So now let's take a look at some common dietary disaccharides. Di meaning two, so two monosaccharides bound together by a glycosidic bond. So here is the first one that I was showing you in the previous slide. This is maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide combined, uh, formed by two glucose molecules that are bound together by this alpha 1-4 linkage. Where do we get maltose? We get a lot of maltose from seed sprouting. So for example, in beer, where we have, uh, that is the malt in beer. Um, we also will get maltose in the process of breaking down large polysaccharides in the small intestine. So as we take a big, huge, long chain of glucose um, of, of starch, we, as we break it down, it will generate some maltose in our small intestine as part of the digestion process. Now let's take a look at the next one. This is sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide with glucose and fructose. Um, also has an alpha 1-4 linkage between them. And uh, sucrose is a very common plant sugar. Um, it's also the, the type of uh, disaccharide that we would find in sugar cane, in sugar beets, in maple syrup. And additionally, sucrose is what we refer to as table sugar. And then the third disaccharide we'll talk about is lactose. So lactose is a disaccharide combined, uh, formed by galactose and glucose. They have a different type of bond, this beta 1-4 this beta linkage. And this is important because this beta 1-4 linkage requires a different kind of enzyme in order to um, break these uh, monosaccharides apart. And uh, lactose is the type of sugar that we find in milk, so milk sugar. Okay, so let's talk about breaking apart and forming these glycosidic bonds. When we, um, when we take two monosaccharides and bind them together, this is called a condensation, whoops, this is called a condensation reaction. The reason we call it a condensation reaction is because we lose a molecule of water in the process. So if we start off, let's look at these two individual glucose molecules. I've circled a hydrogen on one of them and then a hydroxyl, an OH on the other. Those two are going to um, combine to form water in the process of forming this glycosidic bond. So that is a condensation reaction. When we are breaking two monosaccharides apart, we call this a hydrolysis reaction. And that is because we, are, we, need, we need to use a molecule of water in order to break these apart. And so again, I'm showing you, here's the, the water that we start off with. And then um, when we go through the hydrolysis reaction, you'll see that one hydrogen will end up on one of the glucose molecules and then a hydroxyl will end up on, an OH will end up on the other glucose molecule. So a hydrolysis reaction is when we're breaking two monos, when we're taking a disaccharide and breaking it apart. Now, if we were to use that word, the, if we were to use a verb to describe it, it would be hydrolyze. So frequently throughout the rest of this lecture series, I'm going to re be referring to hydrolyzing disaccharides. Okay, what are some other monosaccharides that are important in our physiology? So another category are called riboses. Riboses are five carbon, um, 
uh, uh, carbohydrates. So these are pentoses. Um, and these are important because they are required to form uh, structures such as DNA, RNA, and ATP. So if we look at DNA, it is deoxyribonucleic acid. That ribo in there is referring to, um, to this deoxyribose, this five carbon uh, monosaccharide that is part of the DNA structure. Now, we don't actually need to eat ribose from our diet. Um, we can take the, the ingested carbohydrates and we have the chemical reactions and enzymes available in order to produce these within our diet. And then another category that kind of falls within the monosaccharides are the sugar alcohols, also referred to as polyols. These are really derivatives of monosaccharides, so they're not really sugar, they're not really alcohol, um, but they have a whole bunch of these hydroxyl groups on them. So some uh, common types are xylitol, sorbitol, and mannitol. There are small amounts of these sugar alcohols that are contained naturally in some foods, like in some fruits, but for the most part, our, um, our sugar alcohol or polyol intake comes from synthesized forms that are used as alternative sweeteners.